be never ending. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. The show or the concept? Well, I understand there's a bit of a love thing going on. There's a lot of love thing going on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of loving going on there. There's a lot of love, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of relationship situations going on. Anything in particular that inspired that? Mm, mostly my heart, mostly yeah. my head, and the feelings of being in relationships. Being of loving someone, maybe loving them too much, being not able to let go, and people not being part of your life anymore, so a metaphorical death or a physical death. Um, so that's pretty much the mix of the show. These pieces in particular, just having a look around, some of them are on walls all around the world, and I was just wondering what the ones that are on walls, how the design is related to that particular city. Most of these are murals that have been painted around the world in the last five years. Not all of them, some of them probably going to be murals in the future. Most of them relate to the city. I try, when, I, you know, when I'm going to paint a mural, I obviously have a vision of what I want to paint, a selection of images that I'd like to paint around the world. And then I get off the walls and I'm like, okay, that would work really well with that location. Or that wall is a great shape of this piece. And obviously I, I sort of think and feel how the public will interact with that piece and then try and make it applicable to that area and location. Right, so you've got, for example, the, there's the eyes with your buy, mm -hmm. and I understand that's something to do with the shopping and the commercialism. Yeah, exactly. It was, that yeah. piece was painted in a shopping, out, the first outdoor shopping precinct in Dubai. So I like the idea of these eyes living down on you as you frivolously spend your money. <laughs> shop shop, shop, shop. Yeah. There's Paris over there, you've got Mexico City. Yeah, Paris um, is City of Romance, so that was an easy one for me to, to fit something in. Yeah. Um, it was a huge wall, so I needed something that was tall, obviously, so I wanted a couple of kissing and embracing. I thought it was very typically how people imagine Paris, so that one was an easy one. I heard there's going to be a wedding here. Yeah, so the ultimate conclusion to the show, uh, then the idea of romance, the idea of love, and the idea of loss. Uh, I'm making an installation which has got tombstones as you can see over there, it's got a chapel and I was like what, could, what would be the ultimate gesture of love ultimately? It's to marry somebody, to make a commitment of life. One would hope that's what marriage represents yeah. nowadays but maybe not. Um, so I put it, I got ordained and then I put out a call to anyone that wanted to be married mm. and crazily Got a couple that we're going to get married. Yeah. yeah, there's one couple. Yeah, there's one couple. We've got two potentially, but one couple is very special. Great. So we're going to pretty open. We've got our couple we're going to marry. Fantastic. So we're kind of theming it a little bit around what they want and the body of work as well. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, I guess, part of the installation. Their marriage will be a piece of art. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Very nice. And uh, what's your particular take on marriage? You still believe in it? Uh, I like the idea of it. I like the idea of um, committing to somebody for life. I don't know that we are, by our very nature, able to commit to somebody for life. Um, I think so in today's society it's much harder than it used to be. Um, people are much more disposable, I think in general. People are seen as being much more disposable. I think ultimately people who are searching for something that may be unachievable as well. And I think the idea of romance love, life, marriage is something you have to work really hard at keeping and maintaining it's, it's very hard in today's society so to keep on the same path as that person. So I like it but I feel like it might be flawed in its own structure. I still believe in it. Yeah. I still believe in it. I still believe in it. You believe in it but there's a difference between the fantasy and the reality. Yeah. yeah. A lot of your earlier work kind of reminds me of Hunt Magazine, DIY and Roy Lichtenstein. Mm -hmm. What's some of the music that inspired you through that? Yeah. Or like, you now. The music that inspired me back then, um, as a kid growing up, I was listening to like Death Kennedy's Sun Youth, mm -hmm. Late and Mud Honey, um, Punk, anything Punk, Thrash, you know, that was really like yeah. my, my jam. I liked the DIY mentality that came with that, I liked the sort of car approach to making album art. Um, and obviously that combined with skate culture, which has a similar DIY mentality, yeah. is really what sort of infiltrate my world. I mean that's what instead of studying at school, I studied music and skateboarding or yes. one way or another it led me to becoming an artist that it definitely wasn't through the regular education process. You have the, the skateboarding and the art and as you said the music, like how did you keep the skateboarding and the art going and coming from a doodling space and in an office, yeah. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> well, to the massive walls. Well it's a really organic process and it wasn't something I set out to achieve. I was, you know, I failed at school. Um, I 
barely got an actual education, you know, that you would have as what you call an education. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't what I was doing, I was trying to teach myself and learn myself, and that was staying good in the BT and art. And from that, I managed to, by a very convoluted route, get into animation. And from animation, they got me into design, graphic design, and art. And from that, I got a job in advertising. And when I was working in advertising, I was like, this isn't what I'm about to do. This isn't what I imagined. You know, it's great if that's what your career path wants to be, but this isn't what I want to be. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I started to look for some form of escape. Not escape as in, I'm trying to leave the job, but just escape from the world I was in. So I started creating my own work, which was the inspirations from the things I've had in the past. I was reconnecting to skateboarding, I was reconnecting to graffiti. But trying to use the techniques and the mediums I was using within the advertising industry, I had this great array of equipment that was right there. Yeah. And I was like, well, I could use this to make my own work, and I could use that to put up in the street. And so it became what we now call street art. But at the time, there was no such thing. There was a handful of people, literally a handful of people, were doing something that was what I would call, the, or saw as, somewhat of an evolution of graffiti, but it was more akin to graffiti. Yeah. Um, and then when he started called street art, I was like, oh, that sounds disgusting, it's a horrible term. Um, and so it's, that sort of started getting picked up, you know, but I was doing it just out of my own idleness and boredom. And people started to sort of check it and see it and be like, hey, that's cool, when will you use this, you know, this part of town? And that sort of happened at the same time the internet really kicked in. So you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'll get a website and have that as like my TV station and put my work on there and have people, it's open 24-7. Um, and that's sort of, I think we were the first generation of artists to start to use the internet to sort of promote ourselves and have a portfolio of what was out there. And it just got picked up, it just sort of accelerated and then it got to a point of where I realised I'm spending so much time doing my own work that my job was suffering and my work was suffering because of my job. So I was like, one thing has to go. Am I brave enough to take the leap and try and come into my art full time? Or do I give up on my art and get to my job mentally full time? And I just couldn't bring myself to come to my job. I just knew that at some point yeah. I was going to have to exit that job or be made to exit that job. So I quit and focused on my art. Nice. So yeah, it was. Thank God you did. Thank God, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it wasn't a planned journey. It was just taking yeah. a few risks and believing in what I was doing, believing in the people who were doing it as well at the same time. How long have you been doing this now? 20 years. Yeah. Since you quit your job? Or like. I quit my job and then dabbled a little bit. Yeah. Of Three months work to try and pay the yeah, bills. Yeah, of course. Album art is like an important image for a band, mm. you know, you're trying to portray the music and everything, mm -hmm. pulling up from the floor. And like how the Rolling Stones had Warhol, like what kind mm. of stuff you could do? Well, what is your, what's your experience in that? Well, for me, I was always inspired by album art, you know, even yeah. if I didn't know who the artist was, most of the times I didn't, I just like what I saw, and like the music, and it just happened to accompany cool graphics or cool art. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm musically rubbish, you know, I'm like a brick, it's like there's no, yeah. music. I know good music, I listen to a ton of music, music's really an important part of my life because in my studio I'm playing pretty much every, from the moment I get into money I leave, there's music going, so I go through music really quickly, um, so I'm always li listening for what's new, I'm always listening to past stuff that I was inspired by, but I can't make music, so I've always been interested in working with musicians because it's something I've always wanted to be good at and I've never been good at, and I've tried to play with it, I've tried to learn it, and I'm just rubbish. You discover that you find like a way to visualize the sound. Yes. And yeah. So I, I don't really understand that how music is put together, and then I realize that yeah. my mind works really visually. So I find it really hard to look at the music and see how people read it. I'm like, the, the band is like the people and yes. the band members and all that. Is that the feed in? Yes. Feed into absolutely. absolutely. So you know, when I get the opportunity to collaborate with an artist, it's a really important cool thing. And in terms of doing that, I guess the most relevant one right now is Clip 182. So mm -hmm. Travis Barkle was a, was a collector, a fan of my work. And he reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to work on a new album? I think I'd be interested in putting my artwork to that. Yeah. Uh, which was really exciting. You know, it's, it's great that Travis is a fan of my work, but took someone like that in an advocate and a promoter of his, by his love and interest in it. And then obviously wanting me to put my mark to his music. Yeah, his great. to his kind of yeah, his, I mean, <laughs> career. Great, great, yeah, yeah it's amazing a beautiful career. So yeah, they asked me to do it, so yeah, of course I said yes. I, mean, yeah, I was a little bit old to listen to Blink-182, 
to <laughs> yeah. at the time. Um, so I can't say I'm like the biggest fan or you know, I grew up listening to it. Um, I was well aware of it and I enjoy it. Um, so it's a big fan of Travis. So it was a, it was a nice deal. Yeah. Tell us about Death and Glory Show. It's your first, right? Death and Glory. Is that quite, it was a bit of a prominent moment for you? Yeah. Death and Glory 2006. 2005. I forget when it was now. A lot of people have been like, when are you going to have a solo show? And I, I just didn't feel like I was ready or even knew what that would look or feel like. So I didn't, I, I, didn't, I hadn't put myself into the position of agreeing to do a solo show because I just didn't quite understand what it would be. Mm. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to put the show on myself. I don't have, there's no gallery that I want to be represented by. And there was a very ready and gallery showing this film of work at the time anyway. So it's called Death of Glory because it was literally kind of work or fail, you know, with the title of yeah, right. the answer. Um, <laughs> That's how you're feeling about yeah, it, basically. I put everything I had into it, yeah. and it was either going to work or I was going to have to get a job. Because, right. Uh, that, everything was there. Um, so all the acre are in. Yeah. I, I took, you know, I took the, the risk and the chance of yeah. either making it work or making it cool, or realising it's going to fail. Um, what kind of... Do you feel like you've had any failures, failures, and have you dealt with working through that? I mean, that show was really successful. Um, mm -hmm. If I look at the body of work now, it looks quite naive. Um, there's some great ideas within it, some of the execution. Oh, I don't mean that show, I know that one was oh, successful, right, right, right. but I mean, like, in your career, have there been moments where you feel like it's been harder and troubling for you, or yes, how I do you I think work the, through that? I think the last, the last two years have been pretty difficult. Yeah. Because I lost my studio that I had, and mm -hmm. finding a new studio in London was really difficult. Um, I had this dream of moving to California, but I wasn't able or willing to commit to making that dream a reality. So I was in this sort of holding place where I was like, I can't find a studio in London, but I kind of want to move to California. But I can't commit to moving to California, so right. I was sort of stalling really quite badly. And I realise now I can find a really good yeah, studio and go back in it and just create this body of work. In how London? Yeah, yeah, in London. Yeah. How important having a studio is to me. Because I spend more time there than I do anywhere else, so it's like my sanctuary. Mm. So having found this new studio in London, it's you know, we're going to be really creative and productive. So from that point of view, the last two years have been quite tricky, not in terms of create, creatively stifled or not having a creative vision because I've been travelling painting around the world. But just not having that one place where I'm like, okay, let's make some paintings. I feel like it's kind of your home base. Yeah, you know, just you somewhere that you can come home. back to and you know that it's there. Um, so the next evolution of that is to find something in California where I can work. So I'd like to spend my time, I'm already here a lot, I'd like to try and spend my time more, to actually be more 50 50. And the graffiti's, you know, it's made its progress to the gallery spaces. People are commissioning stuff in their private homes, it's definitely moved off the streets. Mm -hmm. So, what would advice would you give to kids that are vandals running around? <laughs> and like, where do you see the industry growing in the future? Like, where is it going to go from here? You know, I think the, the difference between graffiti and street art is quite fast. Mm -hmm. um, I think graffiti, you know, say, graffiti is like a pure version of street art, you know, it's, there's people, people doing it that only want it to be vandalism, only want it to be criminal damage, they have no inclination or desire to make it art. Yeah, that was, I love the reason, you know, and I love that aspect of it, and I've definitely been involved in that aspect of it. But when I started to make my evolution of that, it was about trying to bring more people into it rather than, it, it's a language that only speaks to people that understand it rather than a language that speaks to more people and brings more people in. So for me, I like the idea of graffiti being very basic and the same thing as it was in the 60s and 70s, it's the same thing as today, although evolved in style and technique, it still is in its very makeup about putting your name out there, getting your name up, mm -hmm. trying to do it in as many places as possible. Street art for me is about an evolution, that it should keep evolving, it should go from being stickers, stencils, posters, to murals, installations. For me, making work in the public domain, I'm, I'm more interested and excited about making sculpture now I'm making, yeah. and leaving them in the public domain, which I've done. I've painted a lot of murals, so that's really exciting to me. But, it's you know, going from the 2D to the 3D. Moving from 2D to 3D. Yeah. And even bringing that element from the murals, which are obviously 2D, trying to make them have more of a 3D element. So for me, it's, that's the evolution. To do my, more installation sculpturally mm -hmm. works within the public domain and also within the gallery environment. I mean, when you bring 
when you put street art inside, it's not street art, it's art. So you yeah. have to make sure that when you're bringing it into a gallery, it holds itself up as art and you're not trying to rely upon its sort of, yeah. the, the crutch, which is, oh, it's on the streets of street art. It doesn't work. It's yeah. So yeah. I think it's really yeah. important, you know, I always look for my canvases in school. They need to be able to sit, aside, sit alongside any canvas from any year or any time mm -hmm. and, be, and speak the right language to the right people and hold up in terms of quality and concept. Because mm -hmm. um, it's really important because it's a, a, the biggest art movement that has been probably in history. Globally, street art's huge and phenomenal. So it, there's no question of it's a point in time that we're going to put a place in its history but for sure it has. Sure. Do you think uh, with the whole 3D moving and then you've got technology and the internet, like how does that all kind of relate to sort of, you know, how it is sort of taking it off the two dimensional wall and mm. into well, the 3D space, like you know, got visual yeah. VR? And, uh, I think there's a lot of augmented reality that can be yeah. possible within street art. I think that's, that's definitely something I'm looking at exploring. I like the idea of animation as well. I'm looking at trying to move from 2D to 3D and then from 3D back into 2D but live on live, live action. Yeah. Um, bringing characters to life, making things have an existence further than I can give them. Yeah. Um, I like people giving this, I like the idea of sharing with the public. So, I mean, for me, that's the whole bunch of street arts, like bringing the public into it. So, I like the idea of creating applications or some form of application where people can apply my work to a space. Albeit yeah. virtually. Interesting. So, I mean, I think there's lots of. I think it's really important you know, as an artist to keep on evolving and moving and try to move with current processes. I use lots of different processes within my work. Um, a, lot, you know, a lot of it's hand painted, a lot, some of it's mechanical. Um, so, I just feel like if you keep on embracing technology to keep on pushing what you're doing and experimenting. What about the hundreds? T shirt yeah. movement that's now happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's really cool to be to doing something from probably from hundreds. Yeah. Um, obviously I saw his logo years ago and thought so it's right having my wings on it in the tongue. Um, mm. So, yeah, obviously I never reached out to him, it's not what I do, he never reached out to me, but at this point in time, he reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to do a collaboration? Instantly I'm like, that's the collaboration, because it's so obvious, it's, it's so right to bring the two, his iconic motif and mine, and bring them together. So. We're doing a collaboration t-shirt and you know, hopefully I'll carry on, we'll do some more stuff with it. Right. So I'm really excited. We've got, there's 150 at the opening and right, yeah. 250 online. Something like that, yeah. Very mm -hmm. limited. Yeah. Get, get in there. Keep the excitement <laughs> up. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, is there anything else you want to mention that, you, that no one else has touched on? No. No? No. Okay. I'll just come to my shirt. <laughs> come <laughs> with this, someone being married in an art show. Okay. Um, Does that mean I'm your date for the wedding? Yeah, you can be my date. It's a date. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go and make a romantic gesture to someone. That would be my date. Okay. I like that. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's a date, yeah? <laughs> Saturday night. Hear me on the Nella vita 